Well, Happy New Year, everybody. My name is Kent. I'm lead pastor here at Epic. Everybody at all of our locations across the city, do me a favor. Give me a big warm welcome to everybody who's with us today, yeah? Yeah. So glad you are at church today. It's going to be a great day. Hey, last week was the Sunday between Christmas and and New Year's. And it's part of our tradition every single year to actually shut down all of our locations that weekend and do something we call Epic Everywhere. Who's part of Epic Everywhere? Yeah, come on, let me hear you. Okay, or just see you. Okay, great. Great. Anyways, good. I'm glad you were a part of that. Um, instead of meeting in our, our, together in our buildings, we actually sent out a video for you to watch from home or wherever you happened to be last week. And uh, as part of that, we actually asked you to take a picture or a selfie of yourself or an ussy if it was a group of you um, and post that online of you watching the video. And I got to tell you, every single year, I love going through all those photos. It's just a ton of fun to see because honestly, it's like, wow, I get to see what you look like without makeup get to see what your PJs look like, get to see what your house looks like. It's just, it's just really interesting. Um, hey, I, I figured I, I wanted to show some of those pictures, and I figured I should probably go first. So, so this is actually my house. Uh, this was our crew. Uh, my wife's brother and his wife were there with us and their kids. So we had a little watch party going on. It was, it was good. And you can't quite see it, but my son Gabe was getting in on the action. He is paling paying full attention. He's a very good pastor's son. So, so that was good. Um, uh, this another one from our house. This is, uh, this is our dog, everybody, right? He's a lot of fun. Um, his, his name is actually Graham, and he's named after Brandon Graham of the reigning Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles. Why are we a little hesitant? What's going on? You worried? You guys worried? I'm not worried. It's okay. It's all right. I know the Cowboys won. And uh, yeah, yeah, we got some Cowboys fans. Yeah, you're at the wrong church. The wrong church. And this ain't the day. So <laughs> you should move on. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope we both make it to the NFC Championship and we send you sorry people home. So um, in Jesus' name. Okay, so... <laughs> This is my dog Graham, and uh, and he's a lot of fun. I was a little, I was a little, kind of hurt my feelings because he's not interested in anything that I had to say. So. I didn't think that was okay. So anyway, so there's that. That's my house. Um, I was looking through all the different posts, and I thought, man, it'd be fun to just, I want to give away some awards for the different posts that went out. And so, so here's one. Um, this one. This one gets the best mom award. Look at this. Oh, right? You got the dog, church, the baby, a blanket. And, and get this. This is one arm, right? There's the other arm. How did she take that picture? That's mom magic right there. It's like, wow, they really do have more than just two arms. That's amazing that they can do that. So, so there's that. Uh, and, then, and then there's this one. This one, this one gets the best, best pants and slippers award. So I just I thought those are nice. That was cool. I think she made those herself. Um, and, then, and then there's this one, this one over here. Uh, this one gets the, uh, you just trying to make us all hungry. What's wrong with you? Don't you know we got New Year's resolutions award? So I'm not sure what that is, but I really wanted some when I saw that. So, and apparently we're popular in Canada. So there's that. Um, so there's that. And then this one, this one gets the, I, I really question your life choices award. <laughs> like, I feel like you should be more concerned about the safety of other people than you obviously are. So that's not, anyway, so there was that. Um, yeah. And then this one, this was just, this just gets the cutest kid award, right? Right? And I know lots of you posted pictures of your kids, but they weren't cute like this one. So, <laughs> so that, there was that. And then, um, and then this, one, this, one gets, this one gets the, um, hey, we really need to talk about your Christmas decorations <laughs> award. And, and I, I just, you know, my wife told me I shouldn't do this one, but I don't listen too good. So what I did do is we blocked out your name, um, but wherever you are, Fairmount, you... <laughs> You know who you are. So there was, there was that. But um, I didn't know what to say about that. It's just, okay. And then, and then there was this one. I thought this was cool. This is the We All Wish We Were You at West Palm Beach Award. Hashtag blessed. Why you got to rub it in our faces. <laughs> so there was that. And then, and then uh, last but not least, this is the uh, You Are Obviously Lost Award. <laughs> it's like... 
No, I, I thought this was fun. Uh, I don't know where this was taken, but here's, here's what she said. She said, it's so awesome to get to tune in to Ad Epic Church so far away from home this morning. You can't beat singing along to the song Mountain Valley in an actual mountain valley. So I was like, oh, that's ironic. Um, so hopefully you made it back alive, whoever you are. Um, and that was that. So, hey, um, I, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone for being part of that and posting all the different pictures. I thought that was, that was a lot of fun. I'm glad we got to be together, even if it was just through a screen. Um, and I wanted to say, man, I'm so glad that you're here today. You've made a great decision just by being here. Because I believe that one of the most important commitments you can make, one of the most dec- important decisions you can make, is for church to be a priority in your life. And so way to go doing that, kicking the year off, right? Everybody, all of our locations, give yourself a round of applause. Be like, yeah, I did good. I did good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Way to go. Proud of you. Uh, listen, I, I really believe this is going to be a fantastic year. I think it's going to be a great year. Like regardless of what happened in your life in 2018, because some of you are like, thank God that is over. It's a new day. Regardless of what happened in 2018 for you, I hope that you are excited about what could happen in your life in 2019. See, I I think part of what I love about this time of year is that we're, have you noticed this? We're all just a little more open to the possibilities of what could be in our lives. You know what I mean? Like we're just a little more aware that, hey, you know, there's, there is the possibility of a different future, of a better future, of, 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 of moving forward and not just moving backwards. Like we're a little more open to that idea. And I'm, I'm just by nature a little bit of a visionary person, you know. I kind of, I, I like to see what isn't already, you know, what could be. I kind of live out there. And so for me, it's like this is an awesome time of year. I love that. There's something about turning the page on a year that all of a sudden makes it acceptable to kind of hit reset and separate who you were last year from who you hope to be this new year. And man, if that's you, if that's where you're living right now, if you're posting all over social media, you're like, new year, new me, all that kind of stuff. If that's what you're doing, hey, you do you, boo. (laughs) You do you. And I hope you do it. I hope you get it. I I hope you don't let anybody rob you of hoping. I I hope you don't let anybody rob you of hope. I hope you don't let anybody talk you down from believing something better for yourself, something better for your family. Because here's the thing, like we said in the scripture earlier today, God's mercies, they're new every morning. So even if you've gotten it wrong every day up to now, God's not discouraged and you shouldn't be either. You know what I'm saying? It's a new day. Put your past in the past. That's where it belongs. Pick up your head. Let's move forward and pursue a better future. You can do it. And we're with you. 2019 is going to be a good year. Now there's some of you, you hear that and you're pumped. Like you're jacked right now. You're like, yeah. And I'm like, that's a little too much. You know how I'm going to say it, right? Hey, you're just kind of built that way. Like, you're, you know, you got like a CrossFit membership. You're like, you're one of those people. You already know how many books you're going to read this next year. You're like, oh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and I get it. You're awesome. You really are awesome. Uh, we're inspired by people like you. But there's also, I think I need to acknowledge, there are also other people that are here that are not like you. And, and maybe you're just a little more like me. So let me, let me, let me explain. And, and, and um, earlier this past year, I actually started seeing a counselor. And uh, one of the things I learned about, and seeing a counselor is awesome, by the way. And if you're like, oh, no, what's wrong with you? Oh, no, no, what's wrong with you if you haven't ever seen a counselor? I'm just saying everybody should see a counselor. It's, other people can see what you can't see. So, uh, so I've been talking to this counselor, and one of the things that I learned about myself is that I really hate losing. And I told this to my wife, and she was like, like, you learned that? You didn't already know that about yourself? I was like, no, I didn't know that, but now I do. I really hate losing. In fact, I hate losing more than I like winning. Anybody else like that? Yeah, hate losing, despise losing. I hate losing so much, I won't let my kids win at stuff. (laughs) I'll just beat them. Right? I'll beat my son in a game, and I'll just be like, hey, when you beat me, it's because you earned it. Is that not okay? <laughs> Every, everybody's kind of like, that's child abuse. I don't, you should reconsider that. Noted. I hate losing. 
absolutely hate losing. And that, that attribute about me, it drives all kinds of behavior. Um, it, it's actually, it, it can be good and bad. Um, it, it's actually what helps make me excel in some areas, but it's also the thing that drives the areas of my life that, that probably needs the greatest amount of growth and the most improvement. And one of the things that I've struggled with my whole life, and I've shared this with you before, one of the things I've struggled with my whole life is my weight. And you would think that if I was really like that, if I just hated to lose, then I wouldn't let food beat me. But it has, like over and over and over again. Chick-fil-A done beat me. <laughs> Krispy Kreme done beat me. A cake done beat me. Any kind of meat just done beat me. They all beat me, all of them. Taste of cakes done beat me, all of them. And here's the reason why. At least this is what I'm learning. Um, I hate to lose so much that if there's a game that I think I can't win, I just won't play. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I can't win, not going to play. Because I hate to lose that much. And so all these years, I've just thought that I couldn't win. So I didn't play. And then a few months ago, I started meeting with a nutritionist. And um, so far since then, I'm 35 pounds down. I I should, I should, every time. I should be a little more, but Christmas, (laughs) right? Anybody else have a butt Christmas or a Christmas butt? Got one of them. (laughs) Got a couple of them, you know. And so I I actually explained this thing about my character to my nutritionist. I was like, listen, I got this thing. I don't like to lose. And if it's a game that I don't think I can win, I just don't play. And I think that's actually played into some of, like, my behavior related to food and that kind of stuff. And um, Anyways, it was, it was time to leave, and right before you leave, you have to, you have to weigh in. Ooh, that's not cool. So you have to weigh in. So I, I did the scale thing, and I walk off, and as I'm walking off, she looks at me, and she says, so maybe this is a game you can win. And I had totally forgotten that I told her about that, and so I was, just thought it was some weird nutritionist thing that she was doing. <laughs> and I just kind of looked at her like, and walked out, and that was the end of that. Next time we met, I was like, oh, I get it. I know what you're talking about. Now, now here's the thing. I say all of that to say this. Even if you are more skeptical about what could be in 2019 than other people are, like even if you're the kind of person that's like, no, 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 no. I've hoped before and lost. I've tried before and failed. I've walked down a road before And there's too much pain on the other side of that. If you're the kind of person who's more skeptical about what could be in 2019 than other people, I just want to encourage you, please do not let the skepticism beat you before you ever even get started. You might not know it, but you have so much potential on the inside of you. God has put so much more in you than you know. His plans for you are better than your plans for you. And even if you can't believe that for yourself, I want you to know that we believe that for you. You see, sometimes that's all you need. You just need somebody who can step in and hold on to hope for you when you feel it slipping away. You know what I'm saying? We want to be that for you. We want to help you hold on to hope when you feel like you can't this year. We, 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 want to, we want to believe even more for you than you can believe for yourself. And you know why? Because God does stuff like that. God believes more for you than you even believe for yourself. He does that for me. He does that for you. He does that for all of us. Which brings us to this series, Potential. Because you've got some. You've got a lot of some. So many of you, you saw the bumper for this series floating around on social, and, and immediately you were pumped. You're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, seriously, you got to calm down. New year, new you, full potential. Let's get it. Let's go. But I know that there's also those of you who really struggle with the idea of hoping again. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if I'm up for giving this another shot whatever this represents for you. But let me say this. Over the next several weeks, 
if you can just find a way to peek past your doubts, I'm going to try my best to, to talk you through three things that I think could really make a difference in your life. To talk you through three things that I think would help you write a better story. To talk you through three things that I really believe will help you reach your full potential. And so here they are, just real quick. It's moments, movement, and mission. Moments, movement, and mission. And you're going to learn all about it throughout this series. Today, we're just going to talk about the first one, moments. So here we go. It's interesting to me that even though our life is made up of so many minutes, it's the moments in those minutes that really mean the most to us, right? I mean, I mean, think about this. There are 525,600 minutes in a year. And as you look back over last year, you look back over all 525,600 minutes of 2018, my guess is that you have no clue which one of those was your favorite. No clue. No idea, right? But you do know what your favorite moment was. Why is that? It's because we celebrate and remember the moments. We celebrate and remember the milestones. That's why we celebrate years and birthdays. That's why we celebrate decades. And if you're alive at the right time in history, you might even be able to celebrate a century. Very rarely, though, do we celebrate months or weeks or days, and certainly not minutes, right? Unless you're dating, right? And then you just, you'll celebrate anything. You're like, oh my gosh, it's our three-day anniversary. Woo! Let's go out to dinner. Listen, fellas, <clears throat> if you're in one of those, run. <laughs> just run. Just run. And here's why you need to run. I'm just saying, this is a good financial decision for you. You need to run because you didn't read the terms and conditions of this relationship. <laughs> and you don't realize this is too expensive. It's too expensive. And you do not have that kind of budget. So I'm just saying, trying to help you fiscally this year. So there's that. For the most part, we don't celebrate the minutes. We don't think that way. We celebrate the moments because it's the moments that matter. I think about this. Your favorite movie, it's not your favorite because it has a lot of minutes. It's your favorite because it has a lot of great moments. That's what makes a great movie. And a terrible movie is terrible because it has a lot of minutes and not a lot of good moments. That's what makes a terrible movie. But your favorite movie, the one that pulls you in, the one that captures your heart, the one that you'll watch over and over and over again, the one that leaves you on the edge of your seat, it's not the minutes that make it great. It's the moments that make it great. And gang, I think it's the same for our lives. I think the same could be said for our lives as well. It's not the minutes that make it great. Well, it's the moments along the way that make our lives great. A life with just minutes and no moments is empty. But a life that's made of moments is rich and full. And that's the kind of life that God wants for you to have. You see, moments, they really do matter. And God uses them in powerful ways in our lives. We see it all throughout the scriptures. Like, even if you don't know the backstory of these different things, you, you could see that it's true because it was in a moment that God gave Abraham a promise and gave him hope for the future. It was in a moment that God gave Moses his calling and gave him purpose for his life. It was in a moment that God helped David do the impossible and defeat a giant. It was in a moment that, that God brought healing to a woman with a blood condition. It was in a moment that God met a woman at a well and set her free from shame and guilt. It was in a moment that God revealed himself in such a powerful way to this guy named Saul that it changed the entire trajectory of his whole life. All that happened in a moment. And the same God who authored those moments in their lives wants to author those types of moments in your life as well. 
He wants you to have moments with him that give you a promise to hold on to and hope for the future. He wants you to have moments with him that give you calling for your life and purpose for your life. He wants you to have moments with him that help you do the impossible and defeat the giants that are in your life. God wants you to have moments with him that will bring healing to your life. God wants you to have moments with him, such incredible encounters with him, that it changes the entire trajectory of your life. God wants that for you. Man, if I could wish anything for you in 2019, it would be that your life this year would be full of moments and not just minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like real moments where you say only God could have done that, not just minutes. So what do you do? Like, how do you ensure that that actually happens this year? What steps do you take? What's the formula? Give me the strategy, Ken. I'm glad you asked. Like, how do you, how do you manufacture a moment with God? Quick answer, you don't. And the reason why you don't is because you can't. You depressed yet? <laughs> you don't have to be. And here's why. Even though you can't make a moment, you can strategically position yourself in environments where those kinds of moments happen all the time. You see, there are some moments that happen in our lives that we have nothing to do with. They just happen, God did it, it just happened, it's like, ugh. But there are also other moments that would have never happened had you not positioned yourself in a place where that moment could happen. Moses, in the scriptures, he did that. In fact, in Exodus 33, there's a conversation between Moses and God that paints a pretty phenomenal picture or paints or at least gives us the idea of how big of a deal these moments were to Moses. Now, this conversation takes place at this thing called the Tent of Meeting, which was literally a tent where a meeting took place. They weren't very creative with the names back then. And the scripture says that... Uh, a ways off from where they had set up camp, Moses set up a tent where he would go and meet with God. And so just like, just like we set up church every single week at all of our locations, that's how they rolled in the beginning. So we're just taking it old school. <laughs> Both people appreciated that. That was awesome. <laughs> they were laughing at our other locations, I bet. Okay. So here's the conversation. Um, I, it, before the conversation begins, I love this verse, verse 11. Here's, here's what it says, my favorite verse in the whole thing. It says, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. What? Did you know that God did that? Did you know that he would want to do that with you? That God would want to meet with you and speak to you as one who speaks to his friend? Did you know that's even a thing? What? It is. Here's how that conversation goes. Verse 12. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me. And I think we got to stop right there because you know what that tells us? This wasn't the first time that Moses met with God. No, it was a regular part of his life. This was something that he did all the time. It was scheduled. This was, this was part of his, of his routine. This was a habit for him. He met with God regularly. So he says to God, he says, hey, you've been telling me. This was a priority for him to meet with God. You've been telling me, leave these people, but you've not let me know who you'll send with me. You've said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. Moses says, listen, God, you've given me a job that's too hard for me to do. Ever been there? Right? You've given me a job that's too hard for me to do on my own. And so Moses is saying, listen, God, what's the plan? You tell me, what's the plan? You ever wonder that? You ever wonder what's the plan? You ever look around the circumstances of your life and go, what's the plan? Right? 
You, you, you ever look around at your city and go, what's the plan? You ever look around your relationships and be like, it's the plan. Moses is like, hey, what's the plan? Verse 14, God tells him the plan. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. So often, we think what we need is a plan. And God says, no, what you need is my presence. Now, you think you need a plan, but what you need most is me with you through it all the ups, the downs, and everything in between. You need me, not a plan. Now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against planning. I think planning is important, right? You fail to plan, you plan to fail. That's absolutely true. I planned this message. We planned this service. Did you know that? We work on this stuff, people. <laughs> we plan this stuff. But you know what I'm learning? I'm learning that even our best plans can fail if our life is lacking God's presence. Even our very best plans can fail if our lives are lacking God's presence. You know who knew that? Moses knew that. Moses, Moses knew that better than anybody. In fact, look what he says, verse 15, back to God. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. He says, if you ain't going, I ain't going. He said, no, 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 if you don't go, I'm not going to go either. There's no way I'm going to go if you don't go. Are you serious? I tried that one time. didn't work out very well. I ain't going if you ain't going. Verse 16, how will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with our people unless you go with us? What else would distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? He says, God, we would be fools if we tried to do even just one moment apart from you. If we even tried to do, make one decision apart from you. Like, don't you realize you're the secret sauce? Like, you're the thing that makes all this stuff work, and if you don't go, we ain't going either. You see, Moses knew his distinctive. Moses knew what made him different. Moses knew what set him apart. Moses knew what would make him successful. And it wasn't his personality. It was God's presence. It wasn't his position. It was God's presence. It wasn't his popularity. It was God's presence. It, it, it wasn't his role now because he got some promotion. It was God's presence. It wasn't his potential or abilities. It was God's presence. And it wasn't his religious pedigree or his background or the side of the tracks that he grew up on. You know the thing that set Moses apart? The thing he knew he needed more than anything, even more than a plan? It was God's presence. You see, it's God's presence in your life that brings hope when you should be hopeless. It's God's presence in your life that can bring peace when others should be wrecked with anxiety or would be. It's God's presence in your life that brings strength when normally you'd be weak. It's God's presence in your life that can bring a confidence when you should be so insecure. Listen, leading a family is too hard a thing to do apart from God's presence. Raising kids is too hard a thing to do apart from God's presence. I got three of them. It's three hard a thing to do <laughs> apart from God's presence. Navigating your career, that's too hard a thing to do apart from God's presence. Being married is too hard a thing to do for some other husband, not me, because my wife's amazing. <laughs> Dating is too hard a thing to do apart from God's presence. Fulfilling God's call on your life, because there is one. Like, you might not know it, but you were made on purpose and for purpose. 
getting that done is too hard a thing to do apart from God's presence. And that's the reason why, like Moses, you and I have to be intentional about having a regular time with God. It's too important a thing. There's too much that hangs in the balance of your decision to do or not to do that. Now, I have my own meeting places, um, several actually. One of them, you like this one, is the front seat of my car. God met me there. Because one time I was going through a really difficult uh, leadership challenge. It was one of those things where I was like, God, if you don't, it won't. You ever been there? And God, if you don't, it won't. And I went to, drove to this place where I kind of sit sometimes and pray, and I was like, God, I need a plan. I got no plan. <laughs> I was like, God, you got to help. Like, where are you at? What's going on? And all of a sudden, this song came on the radio, and the song was about this guy who was sitting in his car at the end of his rope, like having it out with God. And I just, I'm listening to the words, and I'm like, they write this song about me right now? <laughs> and I didn't get any answers to my questions. But you know what I did get? A confidence that God heard me, and he was with me. And I was able to walk away from that just knowing, you know what, I don't have to have all the answers. Just as long as I know that you know, we're good. It's going to be all right. And it was all right, worked out just fine. Another place for me is our church. There's just something about getting together with all of you guys and singing at the top of our lungs. Well, you know, some of y'all shouldn't be singing at the top of your lungs. <laughs> It, like, strengthens my soul when we get together like this, you know? Another place for me is praying with friends. I don't know what it is about getting in a circle with some friends, and we can pray and encourage each other and ask God to do what only God could do. It just gives me confidence and strength. It gives me encouragement. You know what the word encourage means? It means to put courage into. That's what it does. It puts courage into me. Another place that gives me, uh, a place where I meet with God is just anytime I can get alone and read God's word, like it doesn't matter where it is, like God meets me through the pages of his word. And another one is my desk, my office at home. And the reason why I love that one is because it's not too far from my guitars. So I grab my guitar and I do my best to play a few chords and sing along and kind of have like my own little moment. And can I tell you, how many times I've sat in that front seat of the car or sat at my desk or opened up God's word saying, God, I need a plan. I need a plan. God, if you just give me a plan. And you know what I get? Presence. And it's all I need. It's so much better than just a plan. It's God's presence. You know what I'm learning through all of that? Here's what I'm learning. <laughs> Apart from God's presence and God's people in my life, I cannot reach my full potential. I cannot. And so if I were to answer the question, how do I make sure I have more moments? How do I make sure? But if that's the beginning of me reaching my full potential, how do I make sure more of that happens in my life? If I were to answer the question, you know what I'd say? I'd say make sure that you position yourself in the proximity of his presence. And make sure that you position yourself in the proximity of God's people. Because there's something about his presence and being with God's people that changes stuff for you gives you hope when you should be hopeless. Encouraged to keep taking steps forward. At our Christmas services, I, got a, um, I saw a friend of mine, and I uh, hadn't seen him in like a year. And he came up, and he was like, hey, man, you know, I, I made some not so great choices, lost my business. It's been tough. Had a son with him. He said, I've just gone through a real hard time. And then here's what he said. He said, I got this text message about these Christmas services. And I was like, I got to go. 
Like, I just got to go. And so he did. And you know what he said? He said, I'm here. <laughs> he just looked at me. He's like, I'm here. And I was like, you're here. God's going to do something with that. Right? When you've got enough to not let guilt and shame keep you from doing what you know you need to do and being where you know you need to be around people that are going to encourage you and love you and challenge you and lift you up and push you forward. You don't let the, the, the pain of your past or the shame of your past keep you from doing what you know you need to do. Oh, God can do something with that. It changes everything. And you move toward his presence and you move toward his people. I want that for you. 2019, I want that for you. I want you to have a lot more moments, not just minutes. Don't you want that for you? Yeah, yeah. Hey, last thing. Most important moment I've ever had in my life, greatest moment I ever had in my life, was when I asked Jesus to be the forgiver of my sin and leader of my life. Changed everything. It was that decision. And here's the thing. It's kind of like marriage, or at least my marriage. It gets better with time. Like that moment that Tiff and I got married has gotten better over the years because I realized just how, I'm like, ooh, this is better than I thought it was going to be. And that's how it's been following Jesus. It's just gotten gooder and gooder and gooder. I know that's not a word. <laughs> right? And so if you're, I don't know, maybe there's somebody at one of our locations, maybe there's a bunch of somebodies, but you're finally at the place where you're like, yeah, I need God to be the forgiver of my sin, the leader of my life. Here's what I'm going to do. I just want to give you the chance to do that. I'm going to pray a prayer. You just pray along with me to yourself. And then, in a moment, we're going to sing a song. I'm not going to grab a guitar or nothing. They're going to do it themselves. But this song, I think, really captures the heart that Moses had when he met with God in that tent. And it captures the heart that I have when I meet with God at my desk, in my chair. And I think it captures the heart that I want you to have in 2019 to just say, God, I don't have to have a plan, but I have to have your presence. Would you be with me? Because I'm here to meet with you. You know what I'm saying? All right. So if you'd like to take a step to follow Jesus, let's pray this prayer together. God, we love you. We thank you that you first loved us. And Lord, I ask you to be the forgiver of my sin and the leader of my life. Help us to follow you fully. In Jesus' name, amen.